Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with five tips to help you avoid getting burned when buying budget supplies. We love to find a bargain, we love to find that diamond in the rough, but sometimes we just find a lot of frogs, right? We're kissing a lot of frogs, hoping we find a prince. That's what it's like buying budget art supplies on Amazon sometimes. But hopefully I can help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made and others have made over the years. So the first tip I would say is when you're looking at a budget supply, try to figure out who makes it. One of the watercolor palettes that I recommend for beginners is the Pretty Excellent palette. That's made by the same company that makes Paul Rubin's artist grade paints. They're a company out of China, but they make really good quality stuff. So I know that they're made from that company. That company makes them and sells them. And so they're pretty good paint. Generally when companies make their products in-house, even their budget lines, they tend to be a little bit better than just random private labeled supplies on Amazon. When you start seeing uh, different brands pop up out of nowhere with no history, those are generally private label companies. Anybody can start a company and call one of these factories in China and say, can you make me a set of 72 pencils and put my logo on it? And that's what they do. But then the pencils look the same as a lot of other pencils, so you can kind of determine whether this is a private label product or it's actually made from the company that's selling it. The second tip I would say is look for a review before you buy. Don't just trust the ratings on Amazon. Try to find a review where you can see somebody using it. Um, so I would recommend just going to YouTube, searching in the product you want and review, and then watching a couple of reviews to get a feel for this product. Now the next thing I would say is see how recent the review is. So if this video was just posted last week and you're looking to buy this product, you're probably gonna get the same product. It's recent enough. But if you're looking at a review that was filmed maybe a year or two ago, maybe even six months ago, um, I would recommend going back to the listing where you saw the product and looking at most recent reviews. So if you scroll down to the reviews, instead of seeing top reviews, you wanna filter most recent because then you'll see the products that have been most recently shipped out to customers and what they have to say about them. I reviewed a set of pencils once from the company Pagos. I really liked them. They worked really well for me and my artwork that I did, I really enjoyed. I thought it was really nice. Um, and I recommended the product and the next couple months people were commenting back, they bought the pencils, they really liked them, and then the comments started to change. And so then I thought, well, that's weird. And then I saw other people reviewing these pencils and giving them poor reviews. And I thought, well, that's really strange. It's like we didn't even have the same pencil. And then it dawned on me. So I went over to Amazon. I filtered by most recent reviews. And sure enough, the reviews from when I reviewed it from a couple months after to a couple of years prior were great. And then the reviews after that just kind of fell. They were just, they just tanked. And what I think happened because this was kind of when COVID was starting to come around, um, I think maybe a factory had to close and this seller was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and had to order from another company. That's what I think happened. Or maybe that company that they were, maybe he was using the same factory, but they had to substitute supplies because they couldn't get a supply they needed. So check out the most recent reviews to make sure that the product that you're ordering is the same product that was reviewed. I just saw a YouTube video my husband was watching the other day and it was talking about um, some computer part and how the computer part that they would send out to the influencers first would be really high quality, and then a couple months later, people were getting completely different things, and then a couple months later, the people were getting completely different things, and there was like no consistency there. And that's something that you run into with these budget supplies that are from like no-name brands or brands that just kind of popped onto the market. There's just no legacy, there's no consistency, so you really have to buyer beware with those products. The next tip I would give you is if you're ordering on Amazon, not that I mean this to be an Amazon video, but I know a lot of people order on Amazon, um, order products that have the free 30 day return. Now, a caveat with this, um, if you order something based on a review, you're expecting it to perform a certain way and you use it and it doesn't, it's like maybe they said the pencils were pigmented, or the watercolors were pigmented, but you used them and they were very chalky and grainy and just were not good. Um, by getting a product that has a 30 day return window and using it as soon as you get it, then you could ship it back if it doesn't meet your expectations. Now I say this, but I don't want you just to order everything you see knowing that you can just ship it back in 30 days. I would still try to be very intentional about this because I don't think they resell those. I think they just get trashed if they uh, when they get returned, if they're used. I've bought used supplies on Amazon before and they've been brand new every single time. So I, I just think if they've actually been used, they pitch them. So just a little word of caution there, but that will give you some protection if you're worried about buying one of these um, these products from a new to the scene company or no name company, or maybe you're just, you know, hoping it lives up to the review. Um, but if it doesn't, then, then you can send it back. And my final piece of advice to help you avoid getting burned on budget supplies 
is to instead of spending, say, $30 on a budget pencil set, maybe you just buy a few pencils from a more reputable company. For instance, um, a set of like 12 or 24 pencils from Derwent are going to cost you less, chances are, than a set of 120 from a budget brand. You're going to get better pencils that will mix and layer better. You'll have more versatility with that smaller set of pencils. You also become a better artist because you're going to have to figure out how to make those tertiary colors by mixing and layering. And if you use a pencil up, you can buy that one pencil. If you want to expand your collection, like you've got 24 and you're like, oh, I wish I had a reddish brown and I wish I had a pinkish purple, you can buy those two colors of the same line, of that same quality and that consistency and add it to your set. So you're not taking a gamble. And if you are uh, really limited to the amount of funds you can spend on your hobby, it's important that you spend them intentionally and you get tools that will do the job that you want them to do. Now, hey, I'm going to be the first to admit, I love to find that diamond in the rough. I love to find a good quality budget product and share that with you. But if you don't have that much to spend, it's less of a risk to buy a higher quality product, just less of it, and um, and learn how to use those. And then you can add to that as your budget allows. So... That would be my finally bit, final bit of advice. I hope that you are having a creative day, and I hope these tips help you make wise choices with your art supply buying. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting!